Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. Today, a Washington, D.C. Court of Appeals panel upheld a gag order against Donald Trump in the criminal case about his attempt to overturn the 2020 election. The three-judge panel narrowed the original order from District Court Judge Tanya Chutkin somewhat, ruling that special counsel Jack Smith, originally included in that order, is now fair game. But, crucially, the judges barred the ex-president from talking publicly about Smith's staff, court staff, or other lawyers on the case. He is also prohibited from making, and I quote here, public statements about known or reasonably foreseeable witnesses concerning their potential participation in the investigation or in this criminal proceeding. So as of this ruling, Donald Trump is legally restricted from attacking any of the potential witnesses against him in the coup trial. This is a big ruling with big implications. We're going to talk all about that shortly. But one of those witnesses could very well be this man, Kenneth Chesbro unindicted co-conspirator number five in Jack Smith's federal indictment of Donald Trump. And of all the characters in the coup plot, and we've followed them all, Chesbro may be the most mysterious with the most obscure motives. He also may prove to be one of the most important. Kenneth Chesbro had an unexpected path to plotting Donald Trump's coup. He's a graduate of Harvard Law, where he worked as a research assistant for the liberal constitutional law scholar Lawrence Tribe. He later helped try to represent Al Gore after the 2000 election. He was a registered Democrat, donated to Democratic candidates. But Chesbro's political leaning started to shift after he made a fortune investing in cryptocurrency. He joined the conservative legal movement representing Republican politicians. And he got pulled into the Trump election scheme by the lead attorney for Trump in Wisconsin, who Chesbro had worked with in recent years. And Chesbro became one of the masterminds of the coup plot working in the inner circle with lawyers like John Eastman and Rudy Giuliani, who were also indicted in Georgia. He devised what became known as the fake electors plot, as the January 6th committee explained last summer. On November 18th, a lawyer working with the Trump campaign named Kenneth Cheesebro wrote a memo arguing that the Trump campaign should organize its own electors in the swing states that President Trump had lost. Mr. Cheesebro wrote to Mayor Giuliani, that the vice president is charged with, quote, making judgments about what to do if there are conflicting votes, close quote. Mr. Cheeseboro wrote that when the joint session of Congress got to Arizona in the alphabetical list of states, the vice president should not count the Biden votes, quote, because there are two slates of votes. That was a big innovation, right, in this uh, desire and plot to overturn a free and fair election. You'll also note that uh, Kenneth Chesbro was still so obscure a character at that point that no one knew how to pronounce his name properly. We went back and forth here for like six months. We only learned it when he said it himself in front of a Georgia judge. In August, Chesbro was one of 19 co-defendants indicted in the Georgia election interference case. At first, he, he tried this gambit to basically jam up the prosecution by demanding, as was his right under federal law, a speedy trial, like a real speedy trial in a few months. But then just days before that speedy trial was set to begin, Chesbro accepted a plea deal. Please lower your hand and state your true and correct legal name. Kenneth John Chesbro. Do you understand that this is a negotiated plea, which means your attorneys and the state have reached a negotiated recommendation to make to the court? I do. Chesbro, we all said in the newsroom. Chesbro pleaded guilty to one felony charge. He was sentenced to five years probation. He was also able, crucially, as a condition of this plea, to keep his law license because of how that crime was categorized. Now, when Chesbro pleaded, he also agreed to testify against his co-defendants, but it was not clear if he had flipped in the way we colloquially understand. Was he now going to tell all, like Michael Cohen, or was this a begrudging move to avoid a worse legal fate? Chesbro's lawyers indicated that it was, in fact, the latter, that Donald Trump had nothing to fear from his client. I want to make something clear. He did not implicate anyone else. He implicated himself in that particular charge. Someone asked me earlier, if you were Donald Trump, would you be worried? And I could personally, honestly answer no. Um, and it's not, it's not that Mr. Chesbro is trying to protect Donald Trump or anyone else. He's not. He's ready to move on with his life. So that sort of seemed to close the book on Chesbro. Until late last month, when we started hearing about his possible cooperation in other inquiries, 
Now, keep in mind, among Chesbro and his 18 co-defendants in Georgia are some of the actual fake electors, the people who showed up to swear, uh, uh, sign an affidavit saying, I am the duly elected elector, despite the fact they were not. Uh, Donald Trump won the electoral college vote in their state. That's what they were claiming, right? Several other states are prosecuting those groups of fake electors as well in these individual states in which they met. The state of Michigan charged 16 people in the fake elector scheme in July. According to a new report, Chesbro is cooperating with prosecutors in Michigan whose investigation may be broader than previously known. We just learned that Chesbro is also cooperating in Wisconsin, indicating that the attorney general there may also be investigating their fake electors. This week, 10 Wisconsin Republicans who posed as fake electors settled a civil lawsuit, not a criminal trial, civil lawsuit, and to settle it, they had to acknowledge that Joe Biden did win their state. Now, we've got criminal investigations also brewing in other states, both Nevada and Arizona, where Kenneth Chesbro has reportedly become a key cooperator. In fact, he testified before a grand jury in Nevada, where six fake electors, including the state Republican Party chair, were indicted this week. And the Washington Post reports that Chesbro is scheduled to meet with investigators in Arizona on Monday. So all this really makes you wonder whether Chesbro actually has flipped in some meaningful sense and what that could mean for Donald Trump, who remains in serious legal peril. Christy Greenberg served as federal prosecutor in the Southern District of New York, where she was deputy chief of the criminal division. Jeffrey Tubin is an attorney and legal analyst who studied with Chesbro at Harvard Law School in the 1980s. And I'll start with you, Jeffrey, because of all the characters here, I feel like I got a good beat on John Eastman. I sort of, I know Rudy Giuliani has been the public eye for a very long time. Chesbro remains the most mysterious. The only person I've ever seen write anything on, like, what's the deal with Kenneth Chesbro is you. Right. What's the deal with him? Um, the correct pronunciation is the cheese, because that's how he was known uh, in law school. Is that true? It, it is, yes. Uh, he's from Wisconsin, so yeah, there's kind of a right. cheese thing going on there. Um, it's a very weird story. I mean, Ken, whom I did know uh, pretty well in law school, not hadn't had a lot of context since then. I then wrote about him for airmail. He is a very low-key person. He is not someone who seeks a lot of attention. He has been an individual appellate lawyer, never with a full law firm in all the years since we graduated from law school. But he did go through what seems to be a very consequential midlife crisis uh, a few years ago. He got, he got divorced from his longtime wife, part of a midlife crisis. He, cha he started investing in crypto, made a fortune, tried to get Larry Tribe, his mentor, to invest in crypto as well. And most significantly, as far as we're concerned here, went from being a pretty serious Democrat, he worked with a lot of plaintiff's lawyers who tend to be yep. Democrats, to being a right-wing activist, big contributor to uh, Ron Johnson, the, the senator from yep. Wisconsin, to President Trump, and now um, a, a major figure in, in this, um, the sham electors. It's bizarre. Can I give you the inside story no, no, of but why I don't? But, but that's I can more just tell than most people. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's the classic divorce to crypto to coup yes. trajectory <laughs> that you it, see so you often. Know, it happens. <laughs> in yeah. like crisis.